This video I'm going to cover with Mission 3 and 4. Now, in case if you missed it in Mission 2, if you don't have Rebellion level 2, you can buy it here. Mission 3 is very interesting because it went through an interesting evolution throughout the one since I've started running this game. Uh, first of all, I'm going to show you the very first method that I came up with while running this game before proceeding into the optimal one. The first fight you're going to go through is Goldling. You need to kill Goldling in order to proceed further. Uh, obviously, you need to avoid getting hit with those flames. If you get hit by it, then you will get slowed down a bit. Sometimes you might get speed up for a bit for the certain cancel. At the same time, it's better to not get hit at all. So to do this fight optimally, you need to do 1, 2, hold left stick, 3, 4, 5, high time, and then 1, 2, stinger. After Goatling, you're going to approach the first boss that you're going to fight against this one. Let's call him Gorilla. The old method of beating this boss is to shoot it slowly while you're waiting for it to come down. Sometimes you'll try to stomp, so time your dodges accordingly. Once you're face to face with it, do 1, 2, 3 high time for the initial stun, then do million stab. In order to do that move, you have to do 1, 2, and then at the same time transform into a devil trigger, then mash the third button. The less you mash, the less you get hits. So mash as much as you can. And then you'll repeat the process. You'll do 1, 2, 3 high time for a stun check. If it doesn't work for the first time, then you do it again for the stun check. Unfortunately, despite the high reward you will get, if you no damage this and if you get a high stylish rank in this mission overall, you'll guarantee an S rank. Now let's move on to the most optimal method. But before the optimal method, you might wonder, you'd be like, Loner, this is really, really risky. What if I die? What if I mess up really hard during the setup? What's the backup behind it? The answer is simple. You'll just go to air raid or what we call it, round trip it instead. Round trip is one of the most damaging move in this game. Round trip is very straightforward, like it's brain dead easy to pull it off, especially against this boss. One hit from the round trip, it will immediately stun the boss, like it literally puts the armor to zero. The only thing you need to be wary of is your amount of DT and how careful you're gonna spam it. Like you don't need to mash it at all, you just need to tap it once and wait for a bit. I mean, yeah, this was fast and all, but at what cost? Despite there's a backup, despite there is more than that, it's way more worth to save this precious orb at the very last mission. So to do this fight correctly in this very, very risky strat, as soon as you reach the, straight to the door, bait the Goatling on shooting a bit. Be aware that he might backdash a bit, so you need to approach him again. Right. So once you approach it near to the door, you do 1, 2, 3, delay a bit. The reason why you need to delay your attack, so you could get your HP into a red faster. And because there is a friendly fire mechanic in this game, so any other enemies, like for example, Agnavius throws a blade wheel on you, he will uh, he'll be able to damage the Goatling instead. So pay attention to your HP. If you don't get the red HP from this fight, then that's fine because you will get it on the Gorilla fight. So this is where a lot of adaptation works from this mission. There's really no set way of getting your red HP. It's extremely dynamic. So if you don't get a red HP on the Gorilla fight, you either, the most likely scenarios, you either going to tank on DT for the hand door or tank a DT on Gorilla hits or you could get hit in a regular form by either of them. So this is where you have to calculate yourself on what are you going to do in order to reach 
red HP so he could transform into a margin double trigger and destroy the gorilla. For my scenario, I waited myself to get hit by the gorilla, so I shoot it a little bit so it could get down and hit me. So my HP will be red as it enables me immediately to transform into a margin double trigger. Once done that, you do full margin melee combo twice so it could die. If Dante goes back into a human form during the cutscene, then this is the perfect fight that you will need. This was probably one of the hardest videos for me to cover, but I don't think it ends there yet. <laughs> so if you want to know more about Margin Double Trigger, I highly recommend checking a video guide by Dark Harmonizer on explaining how the Margin Double Trigger works. Do note there might be some of the things that will not apply to HD Collection because remember, all the changes from PS2 to HD Collection, some of the glitches has been fixed. So you should refer to the written guide once you've done watching this tutorial. Mission 4. It's an extremely consistent mission, fortunately. It's probably one of the most consistent missions in the entire game either way. The first thing we're going to come across is a puck of wood. In order to break it, you need to hit it 15 times. The optimal method is doing 1, 2, hold left stick, 3, 4, 5, high time. Do it twice, then hold. One, two, three. Okay, so here it comes. The first hit is one, two, hold left stick, three, four, five, and then high time. You do it again. And then finally, you do 1, 2, 3, while holding left stick, obviously. Boom. Bear in mind, you have a potential here to get hit by the Mistras. So if you got hit and lost the count, you can just do 1, 2, 3 combo, the left hold stick thing. The movement here is self-explanatory. I messed up here a bit by doing a high time since I didn't calculate it correctly. Either way, you don't need to pick up the quick heart here. Because you could just roll through the cage since Dante's roll is really really fast. Once you're done through this, you're going to come across the boss. Uh, I'll call it Joker. So the first thing you need to do is to get to the corner of the boss, on the left corner. I messed up getting up there, but that's absolutely fine. Once you get there, you need to jump in. This is where you need to pay good attention at what point and how much I need to attack with Dante. Note when I'm attacking, after I get hit by the tentacle as I'm trying to approach Joker a bit, I get hit with a poison and then I do 1-2. Do not attack as soon as you can, because you will take more damage into that, and then you will potentially die, because you need to play it like in rhythm manner. You need to play it like a rhythm. So you get hit poison with once, and then you do one, two. I forgot to mention this in mission three. When you transform margin double trigger, you want to be on the ground. So in order to be on the ground, you need to st hold the circle button, so the DT will stay on the ground. And during that process, make sure you're holding the lock on still. Then go ham with your melee. If you follow the steps correctly, before the margin form transformation, you'll be able to have an extra amount of DT where you'll be able to utilize it in order to end the mission with your DT margin run. And that is extremely fast than a regular and daughter run combined. So, this mission, we've covered the basics of margin and how this dynamic run can be with your HP management and all of that. Next mission will be really, really tough to cover, so I hope you're mentally prepared for mission 5. It may be rough, but I promise you, it will be worth it once you learn how to do it properly, and it will be more satisfying as well.